character traits, yeah. Courage. Courageous. Keep going, guys. Confident. Confident. Conviction. It can only be seen. Conviction. <laughs> self reliant. Self, we'll call it self generated. Because we spoke about that earlier. Outcast. Self aware. S self aware? Yeah. Why? Because they know themselves and they know that the people around them, they don't have to be like that because they know what they're Oh, kind of like they were saying, the two participants. That they're self aware, but they realize they're souls. Yeah. Okay, self aware. What else we got? Strength. Good, strong. Someone who eliminated inner considering. What else? What else? Rebel. Uh, the elimination of inner considering. No, no, we need character traits. Yeah. Rebel. Rebellious. Rebellious is a character trait. No, we're taking what would it take to be a rebel? What's the character trait? Willful. Hmm. Okay, willful. That's part of strong, kind of. Any others? Determined. Yeah. Inner peace. Inner peace. Inner peace. Like they've accepted themselves. They have inner peace. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, that's part of self-generating, but I'll, I'll be kind. Inner peace. It's more of the, That's more the feeling you get. Yeah. That's what you get. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's. It only works if why is a good thing. But you can have. We're, we're only talking about why is a good thing. Oh, you're not talking about if why is. He like didn't. He didn't just like, go off and become like a neo-Nazi or something. <laughs> okay. Fair. He's added to his or her life in some way. That's that's big enough that it's affecting others. Any others? Rooted. What? Rooted. Rooted, okay. Rooted. <laughs> Any others? Uh, these look pretty good. Mm, I don't know if that's the right word. That's usually a negative. Stubborn. What? Stubborn, but in a What do we say committed? <laughs> You see how committed fits there to stay why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It is open enough to hear the other side, but closed enough not to let it affect you. Okay, open. Well, they were open enough to become a why. They were open enough to go check it out. Yeah, open enough to, to become. Turn back to be an open mind. Okay, you guys, everyone did really well. You missed the number one one, mm -hmm. which is fine. I, I've never taught this where the group got it, so you're doing great. Okay, um, but I love dropping the bomb later. Uh, it's a lot of fun as a teacher. I don't guess no. Oh, you still want to guess? Yeah. 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 yeah don't worry about it. No one ever guesses. Yeah. I usually even have to spell it, like slowly, till people can catch on to the Sick spelling. Like Just leave it alone. <laughs> okay, here we go. Imagine when, like, I flew to Jerusalem, met Rav Noach Weinberg, like, heard about Torah, proofs of God, you know, discovery program on, you know, the Torah's divinity, and I'm like... I was totally why, and I fly back to the U.S. where, you know, my basically reform or conservatox relatives and, you know, they're all just doing whatever they want, and they, um, and, and I come in like turbo Jew, you know, I, I would, didn't have these, but, you know, I was with a keeper and I got my <laughs> cosmic dental floss, and I'm just like having a gila, you know, and they're, and eating kosher, and, you know, I had to go to a family event, I'm like eating my own little, you know, whatever. And do you think like my, do you think like my Beverly Hills family came up to me and said like, they're like, wow, that my English name is John, you know, wow, John, it's just amazing. You are so courageous and confident, full of conviction, self-generated, self-aware, strong and willful, rooted, committed and open. <laughs> you just must be full of inner peace. Is that what she said? No. I, I remember the conversation. It was like, it was like, you were in a really weak place. I get that. You were, you were really in a weak place and you were, you were, you were suffering. And uh, it makes sense that you, you found something. Because coming from that, like, insecure place you were at, like, yeah. I get it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was like, I was like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, like keeping kosher in Beverly Hills, and I was just like, <laughs> you know, super Jew, you know, like, like keeping Shabbos, you know, where nobody's keeping Shabbos, and I'm like doing Shabbos, you know, and it was like it was taking every last 
bit of moral strength and character that I had to be able to do it. And that was the interaction. You were weak. You get where I'm at? Now, that's the attack. But then we go to the number one word. What's the number one word? What belongs up there? Secure. Secure? Okay. I'm not writing anymore until we get the word. Because if he was here, that means I'm late. Whoa. What's the first letter? <laughs> We're going to spell it. Yeah, let's, get, let's cut to the chase. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, here we go. I. Inspired, inspired. Uh, cousin Yosef got it. Oh, did I? <laughs> Integrity. Integrity. Why integrity? Because it comes from the word integration. You want a definition? Those who are taking notes, there's almost nobody. But you want a definition of, tech, of integrity? Integrating what you know with who you are. Think about it. If you tell a thief how bad it is to steal until he can repeat the reasons, and then you watch him on a camera, a surveillance camera in a co-op, or in a, sorry, in a shop, and you see him steal, what does he lack? Integrity doesn't integrate it. He says, yes, I get it. I realize these are the reasons why, and then he goes and steals. That is a person that lacks integrity. So again, the definition of integrity is when you integrate what you know with who you are. If I plug this phone into my home stereo, the whole system works for my phone now. It will integrate the, sound, the songs. The amplifier, the wires, the speaker wires, the speakers, everything gets, it gets integrated into the system. In a rhyme, the words are, if it's true, it's you. If it's true, it's you. And you become a why. But the sad thing is, is that, and I get to see this sometimes, and I hate to see it, is when someone actually thinks they're going to make it as in Y in X land, and they don't necessarily, on a scale of 1 to 10, they don't get a 10 on all these character traits. What happens is they start developing an appendage. And they slowly, like, become an X. And sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll be in a class, you know, I'm teaching a class, a couple hundred people, wherever, Vegas, Seattle, Washington, L.A., wherever. And there's a big crowd of people, and I'll just notice I recognize some guy in the back who used to be a yeshiva boy had, here at age, or I knew him when he was or Sameach, or, or it's a woman who was, got all turned on to Judaism, wound up in seminary, and there she is in the back of the class in pants and a t-shirt, and, and, you know, and she's come back because she really wants to talk after the class and get a little strength. But there are many people who get worn down and they develop that appendage, and they're back to X. So you gotta really know, you gotta know when you're ready. Rabbi Ellis and I, he'll be teaching the next class on what? What's that class on? In Pursuit of Pleasure. Nice. So he's gonna be teaching a class called In Pursuit of Pleasure. But the two of us can tell you that we have seen a direct correlation for how long someone spends in yeshiva or in Sem, how long they spend in Israel, with whatever newfound worldview they've gotten, which may be just a different way of looking at their Yiddishkeit, even if they're raised observant. But we could, count, we could tell you after years and years of teaching that if they leave too soon, if they leave before they've integrated, and then they go back to where they're from a little too early, so then they eventually develop that appendage. Because people don't know what it's going to take. It's really nice you feel inspired while you're in Yeshiva or Sem in Jerusalem. But you need time with it. You need to integrate it. Integration takes time. You've got to live it. You've got to walk it. You've got to be it. And, and it could be for some people they should never be there. Meaning, I, sh I probably should never have been, after I found Judaism, I probably should never have been in West L.A., West Los Angeles. And I never did go back besides visiting my family. But it wouldn't have been appropriate because it's a fish out of water. It's a salmon swimming upstream. It's, a, it's constantly being in the wrong environment for your growth. And so, and so I listened to my rabbis when I was a young whippersnapper here at Eshatera. 
And, and you know what they tell, told me? They said if your parents had any idea, because my parents wanted me back in LA, if they had any idea what they stand to gain by you staying here, they would chain you to, the, to the, your yeshiva table to study Torah. It's just that they don't get it. They, they weren't here experiencing all this. And that was enough to know that I'll, I'll do it for my parents. I'll stay. And that's why I'm standing up here and you're sitting there. Because cause I, I listened to my rabbis. I didn't do it my way. I would ble I bless everybody that today's installment in Mastering Free Will, that you all get the courage to reevaluate your lives so that, so that you can live a life you love and happy, healthy, from the soul. Amen. Rabbi Ellis, I imagine there might be some bathroom stops. I went really late today. I'm sorry. Five minute break. Five minute break. Okay. Rabbi, I always try to inspire.